Hello everyone. Welcome to the third in the Restoring Life Life Hacks series. Um, this is a series where I talk you through some of the powerful restoring exercises that are in my book, um, Restoring Life Tough Bliss. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because uh, when we published the book over a year ago and the audiobook's about to come, lots of people said, I love reading your story, Jen. But when it gets to the exercises, I just, I have this resistance. And even though they sound fun and, and I really want to do them, I run up against the story of my old habits and my old conditions so that I haven't got time, this is pointless. So I'm doing this series to start to bring to life some of these incredibly simple and yet powerful exercises. So this week I'm doing this from uh, my bedroom. And the reason for that is, is that I want to talk about dreaming. Um, over the lockdown period, I'm sure many of you like me have been having some intense dreams, if not perhaps uh, teaching dreams, as I call them, where suddenly we're being shown certain things about our story and our beliefs that help us to transform them. Uh, fear based dreams. Um, I certainly have been having my share of those, which are still teaching dreams. They're still a window into what's going on in your subconscious underneath the noise of the day world mind. Um, and for many, many years now, I've worked with conscious dreaming to understand how to transform the underlying weft and weave of my story. I've been really blessed to have several incredible teachers in this realm, many of them from indigenous backgrounds, where this is much more a part of everyday life. And in fact, in many societies, um, dreaming both individually and collectively on behalf of the people is an incredible ceremony um, that many, many uh, tribes would use to actually guide their decision making. So after having learned this from a variety of different lenses, I decided to make this a regular practice in my life. And the way I do that is I treat every night that I want to go into conscious dreaming, that's not every night, some nights I just need to sleep, um, but I treat it as a ceremony and I set intentions. So before I go to sleep, I meditate and I tune into what is the question I'm holding? Is it a question? Is it a person? Is it a situation? And I hold that in a container of love. Um, and I then set an intention to my dream space um, around the fact that I will receive some form of clarity, either in the dream itself or the following morning, if the dream has seemed haphazard, which they often do, um, the dream world is often full of symbols and metaphors and characters and it can seem very messy. Um, that is the nature of our subconscious mind. And so to untangle it sometimes takes a period of weeks to understand the deeper meaning of that. And I think dream working will be a a uh, separate session, I might do that next, um, because there's quite a lot of techniques you can use to work your dream once you've had it. I am not a fan of classical Western dream interpretation. I actually think that's dangerous. Um, and it comes from a place of your conscious day world mind, where actually um, you're just applying the existing story over the top of something that you're trying to transform. And that's that doesn't get me to the real juice, I find. So um, we'll talk about that in the next session, perhaps. But in terms of courting the dream, romancing your dream, um, you might want to contemplate a few things. So you might want to contemplate sleeping with something that represents your question or your situation under your pillow. Um, I use this incredible light life ring and um, which i'll put the link in the notes uh this is light life technology that is based on ancient ancient ratios and measurements uh to literally channel light um and this is a wonderful woman called katharina sperling um using the work of her late husband slim sperling to actually create incredible healing tools like this so i'll put the link to them in the notes i sleep with this under my pillow every night regardless um and this not only ensures that in my dream space that I heal, but actually um, if I have an intention, what I do is I put it inside the middle of the ring. So last night I slept with this incredible teacher stone under my pillow. Many indigenous uh, populations believe that these kinds of stones that have the bands of 
different kind of stone through them are teaching stones and these are storylines. Um, and a dear friend of mine, Lorna Howarth, uh, who I'm sure you'll meet in one of these episodes, uh, gave me this stone a few years ago and it's an incredible teacher for me. So last night I slept with this in the middle of my ring under my pillow. Um, and what I will do often is I'll light a candle before I sleep and say a prayer or just set my intention out to words because something happens when we speak the words of power that are inside our hearts. And then I will try to let go, meditate, relax, uh, have some nighttime tea often that helps me to sleep and I drift off into the dream weave. What you may find is you wake up in the middle of the night with something quite sharp in your awareness. Now, <laughs> often for me I'm quite sleepy but I will grab I have to admit I use my phone I do put it on airplane mode but I use my phone mainly because I sleep with my husband and if I turned on a light in the middle of the night to write notes he would get really annoyed so I use my phone and even if it's just a few random words those words are enough so that when I wake properly in the morning I can recall those important elements of the dream so I will take a note if I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes you'll sleep all the way through the first thing to do is reach and get either your phone or a notepad or whatever you want to do to record your dream and just write fragments fragments of the dream and then get up and I usually have my morning my morning lemon drink and I get ready and I have a shower and I allow those elements of the dream to permeate my awareness throughout the day and I allow that dream to slowly work me throughout the day and I try and stay away from creating stories about it um, and this is where the real depth starts to come through from that imaginal archetypal realm and like I said we'll talk more about that in next week's video so until then um have some fun with dreaming and of course you can find that that exercise and lots of the others that I've been talking through in the book which is also available on kindle so you don't have to wait to order it um but of course if you have any questions then please reach out at talk to us at beyondhumanstories.com and I will look forward to dreaming with you again next week thanks <laughs>